A day in Tuscaloosa is straight ahead. Let's get you all set here at the Voice of College Football. We appreciate the conversation each and every time with Stephen M. Smith of TouchdownAlabama.com and, of course, his show that airs right here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 Central, in my own words. And, of course, we want to get uh, Stephen's take in his own words today on Alabama football. Stephen, how are you doing today? Doing great, Mark. Uh, spring football went by quickly. We got the A-Day game on Saturday at Bryant Denny and uh, uh, honoring Wilbur Jackson and uh, John Mitchell Jr., the first two you know, African-Americans to integrate the football program. So that'd be pretty cool there, seeing those two get their plaques and get their flowers as they rightfully should. So uh, update us on the... Um... The, the dates concerning that historic event. This would have been around 19, what, 72, 73 in that range? 1972. Right there, about, about that 1972 range. Wilbur Jackson was the first one recruited out of Ozark, Alabama, Ozark High School. And then John Mitchell came as a transfer. So they were, they were the first two, Wilbur Jackson as a recruit, John Mitchell as a transfer. Excellent. Very noteworthy. Great stuff there. All right, Stephen, let's get uh, before we um, get to the on the field happenings um, in practice right now. Tyler Steen, a very uh, talented and experienced uh, offensive lineman out of Vanderbilt, is making his transfer decision uh, here soon, it appears. Give me your thoughts about uh, where he could be leaning and what kind of problems he solves for the Tide. Well, he's made uh, quite a few visits here, Mark, one of those visits being to the University of Alabama, Steen at 6'5", 315 pounds from Miami, Florida, went to St. Thomas Aquinas High School. He has big experience in the SEC. We have seen Coach Saban, when he sees a guy that's got experience in this conference, he is not afraid to go out there in that transfer portal and bring somebody in We've seen it with Henry To'o To'o, Jamison Williams, though Jamison Williams from Ohio State. We've seen it now with Jameer Gibbs from Georgia Tech, Jermaine Burton from Georgia. So, I mean, we've seen this done. Also, Eli Ricks from LSU. So, Saban, not afraid to go and look at that portal. When you look at Steam, he's played in 41 career games, 33 starts, 21 of those starts at left tackle, 12 of those starts at right tackle. So, very versatile at both tackle spots if you watch the tape from the georgia game between vanderbilt and the and the bulldogs steen held his own uh, against the likes of jordan davis and quay walker and nolan smith and those creatures that kirby smart had on that side of the ball uh steen did his own did his thing he held his own he serviced well he kind of you know neutralized some of those guys from getting to him the passing game that you know, Vanderbilt put out there on the table. So if you were to get Steen to Tuscaloosa, it would cut your offensive line problems in half because you would have a guy that's very experienced in this conference at left tackle and right tackle. So if you put him at left tackle at the right tackle spot, you can pick from a J.C. Latham or a Kendall Randolph or a Tommy Brockermeyer or an Amari Kite, just kind of plug and play there if you will. The same thing, if you were to put Steen at right tackle, at the left tackle position, you could plug and play. So if Alabama was to land the young man transfer from Vanderbilt, South Florida native, this would cut the concerns for Coach Saban and offensive line coach Eric Wolford in half to where you would have a veteran guy that knows this conference. You can plug him right in there. And then at the opposite tackle spot, you can kind of pick and choose where you want to go from from that aspect. We're on the line with Stephen M. Smith of TouchdownAlabama.com. Please join his show each uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right here on YouTube. In my own words, 6 Central. Check it out. All right, before we get to your expectations of what you would like to see this Saturday, let's talk about um, some of the news and notes coming out of these uh, scrimmages um, that have uh, been played here recently. What uh, stands out to you? Well, first and foremost, Mark, the uh, transfer receiver, Jermaine Burton from Georgia, has filled in nicely as the potential number one guy for Bryce Young to go to. Uh, Burton, in two seasons at Georgia, 53 catches, you know, 901 yards, eight touchdowns, nothing too shabby there at all of uh, his past season in helping Georgia capture its first national championship in 
40 plus years. Uh, he had 26 catches last season, 497 yards, had five touchdowns. And while, you know, Stetson Bennett was reliable, Stetson Bennett, an absolute gamer, and his story in itself is quite remarkable. I'm pretty sure, you know, Burton kind of looked at, you know, Stetson Bennett is a Toyota Camry. I like the Toyota Camry. Very good, reliable car. But when you got a Bryce Young here, who's kind of an Escalade, a Ferrari, a very luxurious car, you're like, I kind of want to hop in that and take that for a spin there. So Burton making that decision to go to Tuscaloosa. And you can clearly see you know, both of these two young men, Burton and Young, coming from those high school camps in the California area. Great friends. And that friendship has hit it off really fast here. In these two scrimmages, Burton has really jumped off the page. According to Coach Saban, he is giving out the compliments to the young man. And we know Saban doesn't compliment too often unless he knows that you are something special and you can add some value to the team. And uh, for Burton, this recent scrimmage here, you know, I was told had seven catches, you know, two for touchdowns. One went for a 97-yard touchdown. So you see the speed, the burst, the explosiveness, the breakaway acceleration right there uh, in front of you and filling in nicely for the departed Jamison Williams off to the NFL draft. So some good things here from Jermaine Burton. Uh, the offensive line, we're getting some mix and matching going around here. Coach Walford has come in. He's pushed some buttons. He's moved some things around, which is good. In the second scrimmage, the starting five uh, from left to right looked like Kendall Randolph, Javion Cohan, uh, Seth McLaughlin, and Damian George at right guard, and J.C. Latham at right tackle. And that first team group with those names mentioned, they moved the ball. Alabama consistently run the ball with more power, with more uh, precision, being more instinctive and straightforward about doing that, a bit more push there in the run game, and pass protection getting a lot better. There's still those moments where Will Anderson will get the better of somebody, which he's Will Anderson. He's going he's gonna to do that from time to time. There's still those moments where a Dallas Turner or a Chris Braswell may get the better of an offensive line, but the first team group is doing a sound job. Now, Coach Saban is trying to give Kendall Randolph, who is entering his sixth year in the program, a shot to win that offensive tackle job. If you if you bring Tyler Steen in here, then that becomes kind of a shakeup because Steen has the bigger experience in SEC play. So we will see what Steen's final decision is in terms of how can this offensive line really sort of shape out. But the first team group uh, looking pretty solid out there. At running back, Mark, I mean, nobody has just really, truly separated. This is a dynamic running back room. Now, Jameer Gibbs from Georgia Tech, he gives you that uh, Alvin Kamara, Kenyon Drake type of breakaway quickness that Alabama fans love to see. But Trey Sanders has had a really good spring, and he's saying, hey, don't count me out of the mix. So Trey Sanders has had a big spring. The freshman, Jamarion Miller, from Tyler, Texas, has made some good runs in his own right. He's had a strong spring. Um, uh, uh, Roydell Williams and Jace McClellan continuing to recover here from injuries that they suffered from the 2021 campaign. They'll be good to go in summer workouts and fall camp. So right now, nobody has just completely separated themselves as I'm running back one. There's a dynamic room here, and all of these guys are, are taking their talents here to the table. Uh, on defense, Here's where it gets interesting here, Mark, because uh, if Alabama can locate that dynamic nose tackle, that man in the middle of a defensive line that can create a bunch of havoc for offensive guards, offensive centers, quarterbacks, running backs, the whole nine, then we could be talking about a really dynamic Nick Saban defense because the, uh, the linebacker core has been phenomenal in spring ball. Outside linebackers have played well. Jalen Moody has really been the guy next to Henry Toto at that weak side backer spot. And then in the secondary, you know, Bama's got dudes. Eli Ricks has looked great. Kool-Aid McKinstry has grown. Malachi Moore is back healthy, back to what he looked like as a freshman. Brian Branch has played well. Jordan Battle, DeMarco Hellams, they're out there you know, laying folks out on the field. So uh, the second scrimmage, Alabama secondary had five to six interceptions, including a few pick sixes here. So for the Tide, it's 
the man in the middle that knows tackle, can they get that position solved? And that's the spot where Coach Saban has talked about. They've got guys that can do it, but can those guys step up and do it on a consistent basis in terms of pressure in the pocket, collapsing it from the inside, you know, stuffing the running backs, and then also making it difficult for a quarterback to step up and make those plays there from within the pocket. So the, the Bama's got bodies when you talk a DJ Dale, a Tim Smith, a Jamel, a Jamel Burroughs, a Jamarian Latham, a Stephon Wynn. Uh, you've got Damon Payne also and Quinn Barnes, Tim Kennedy the third. you got a freshman here also in Jaheim Otis from Mississippi who's really creating a stir in spring practice. So the names are there. It's who's that guy that can put Alabama back in the mind frame of a Deron Payne, a Quinnen Williams, a Christian Barmore, a Jesse Williams, a Terrence Cody. They're one of those types of guys that just really created havoc there from that nose tackle spot. So that's the area that Alabama's trying to shore up right now. Folks, please hit the like button. And uh, subscribe right here and get on over to Stephen's show each and every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right here on YouTube, in my own words, 6 Central. It's a good listen, a good watch, and you can call up Stephen and talk Alabama and the SEC. All right, Stephen, in addition to the uh, dining options for the media this Saturday, I know that's first and foremost on your mind. Uh, we'll get past that, and you've already covered a ton of ground. Is there anything else in regards to matchup? battles, position units, anything out there. You know, we're not going to get much in regards to um, coordinator uh, schemes and so forth. It's going to be very vanilla, of course. But beyond that, in terms of how guys are trying to set themselves up for August, wh where do you stand there and what are you looking for? Well, first and foremost, I got to look at my guys on the offensive line. I mean, that's the first group I look at. And after this past season where – it wasn't at the standard that people expected it to be at. So how does this offensive line look in spring? Uh, can it protect Bryce Young? Can it, you know, open up those holes in the run game? You know, what, what what's the footwork, the hand strike? What does this offensive line look like? And can it be a Joe Moore award type of group, left tackle to right tackle? So that'd be my first look. There's a, is that offensive line. Number two, I will have my eyes on the defensive line, in particular at nose tackle. Who plays the best in that spot? Who's the most disruptive? Who's causing the most chaos? Who's the guy that nobody can seem to block? And uh, if a guy emerges that has those types of traits and characteristics and that can do them, on every given time, uh, my eyes will be right there at that nose tackle position. Uh, number three, it would be, you know, at, at wide receiver after Jermaine Burton, who takes that step forward? Because you got a lot of bodies there, too. When you talk Trayshawn Holden, Christian Leary, JoJo Earl, uh, Ty, uh, Ty U. Jones Bell, you got some freshmen in here, Aaron Anderson, Kendrick Law. You know, behind Jermaine Burton, who takes that step there? At the wide receiver position, my eyes will be right there. And you know, last but not least, uh, for me, will be in that defensive secondary in regards to making those types of plays, creating those turnovers. You know, who are those guys standing out back there? And then uh, you know, the, the freshman, right? I mean, is there a freshman that just really has you go, wow, like this guy, like where did he come from? So you definitely got to keep your eyes on the the freshmen that really take advantage of the moment, so to speak. So that's where my eyes will be on, Mark. Steven, despite what you just outlined at the wide receiver position with the layers and layers of talent, uh, based on what we saw last year with Jamison Williams coming in and making a major impact, and of course Jermaine Burton expected to do something similar this year, do you think that that's the most likely target for possible transfer portal uh, additions after spring practice? It could be. It could be just determined, just seeing how Alabama has become a home for transfer receivers. Uh, when, when you look at guys like Richard Mullaney, who transferred in a while back, uh, Garrick Dieter, who transferred in a while back, and the success that they had, and then Jamison Williams just completely popped the top off everything, 79 catches, you know, over 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns, uh, when you look at just those types of numbers 
a transfer receiver is going to say, okay, I saw what Jamison Williams did. He's going to the NFL. I saw what a, a Richard Mulaney did in a different time area there, but he had success. Garrett Gitter, Garrett Gitter, the same thing. And to have a chance to play with the Bryce Young, a returning Heisman Trophy winner, that's got to be on the up and up on a lot of guys in this. So that, that's, what, that's how I would see it. Stephen M. Smith, Touchdown Alabama, and get there for his show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6 Central, right here on YouTube, 7 Eastern. I'll do the math for you in my own words right here on YouTube. Stephen, you enjoy the, the game. Hopefully, we will have some good uh, weather there in Tuscaloosa. I'm hoping for good weather and good food, Mark. We can get good weather and good food. We, we in the ball game. Football, weather, football, food. It You can't miss right there. It's going to be a good day, as it always is for you, Stephen. We appreciate you being here. No problem. Thank you.